and I would like to call Dr. Rodney Morris uh, for his first talk on uh, fundus florist in angiography. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Saurabh. So I'll be, uh, it's my financial disclosure. So the uh, briefly into the angiogram, different phases what we have. So first phase, you have the choroidal phase, which is around 10 to 15 seconds after the injection, which, is, uh, which are uh, faint, patchy, irregularly scattered and interspersed with uh, islands of fluorescent filling. That's the classical description of the choroidal phase. And this is, follow, uh, this is in this choroidal phase, you are uh, liable to see the uh, celoretinal artery. And following the choroidal phase, you have the arterial phase, which occurs one to three seconds after the choroidal flush. And it extends from the first appearance of the dye in the arteries until the whole arterial circulation is filled. And this is followed by the arteriovenous phase, which in the early phases, you have the laminar flow. And the arterial phase completes with the complete filling of the lumen. And the foveal avascular zone is best seen during this phase. And then this is followed by the recirculation phase, which is about 30 seconds after the dye injection. And then you have the late phase, which is about 10 minutes after the injection. So some uh, time that we need to keep in mind, first is the arm choroidal time, which is normally seen around 10 to 15 seconds. And any timing that is more than 30 seconds is uh, labeled abnormal. The next one that you have to keep in mind is the complete uh, choroidal filling, which takes place in around three to five seconds. And anything which goes beyond five seconds is abnormal. And the AV transit time, normally it's about eight to 12 seconds. And anything that goes beyond 15 seconds is considered abnormal. So the abnormal uh, fluorescent angiogram, you can have the, either the hypo or the hyper. Hypo is a reduction or absence of normal fluorescence, and hyper is an area showing the fluorescence in excess what is expected of. So uh, this is the algorithm to interpret a normal angiogram. So uh, if you have any abnormality, so you can have either the hyper or the hypofluorescence. In the hyper, you have uh, four different types. You can have either a leakage, pooling, staining, or a transmitted fluorescence. And in the hypofluorescence, you can have either the block fluorescence or the non-filling so coming one by one, so the hyperfluorescence is uh, nothing but the transmitted fluorescence because of retinal pigment epithelial atrophy, highlighting the underlying choroidal uh, so, uh, flush. So window defects uh, showing the background choroidal fluorescence is uh, known as the transmitted hyperfluorescence. So this is the classical description as seen over here. You can see areas of uh, choroidal atrophy and the areas where there is a pigment clump, you can see hypofluorescence because of the block fluorescence. And the hyperfluorescence areas that you see in the margins are the areas where there is an absence of retinal pigment epithelium highlighting the background choroidal flush. So next one is the uh, hyperfluorescence is the leakage. And the classical description of a leakage hyperfluorescence is uh, CSCR. And as seen over here, you can see this pinpoint leak which uh, increases as the phases of the fluorescent angiogram pro, uh, pro progresses. Or you can get multiple uh, leaks over here, uh, hyperfluorescent leaks as seen over here in a case of atypical uh, CSCR. And uh, these are the classical descriptions of a pooling. So in the later phases of the angiogram, you get pooling, which is again another type of hyperfluorescence. Another hyperfluorescence of leakage uh, type is the uh, classical uh, classic CNVM, which uh, shows a cartwheel appearance in the early phases of the angiogram. And as the angiogram progresses, you can see the intensity of the fluorescence uh, increasing and the margins becoming fuzzy. Another example of uh, hyperfluorescence because of leakage is in diabetic retinopathy, in the proliferative diabetic retinopathy stages. In the new vessels, leakage from the new vessels, if it's at the disc, it's a new vascularization at the disc or NVD, or if it is elsewhere, it is NVE. Coming to the next type of hyperfluorescence is the pooling, which I already told you. So the classical description of a hyperfluorescence in pooling is increase in size initially, but not in size or intensity in the later phases of the angiogram. So this is a classical example of a multiple serous RD. So where you can get hyperfluorescence uh, 
in the late phases, the pooling is better delineated. You can see these pockets of hyperfluorescence. This is a classical description of a pooling hyperfluorescence. The last one is the staining hyperfluorescence, which is a leakage with retention, is known as staining, and it can be given normally by the bare sclera, lamina cribrosa. Uh, the staining can be shown by these normal structures. This scarred CNVM is another example of uh, a staining pattern where the edges of the um, uh, lesion can be highlighted of hyperfluorescence because of the staining. Or in uh, vasculitis, you can get staining of the vessels, as seen over here. Coming to the hyperfluorescence, you can have two types, the blocked and the filling defects. The first, the blocked fluorescence is because of anything that blocks the fluorescence. It can be either a preretinal hemorrhage or an intraretinal hemorrhage or a subretinal hemorrhage. And the next one is the non-filling type or um, uh, capillary non-perfusion defects. So here you can see uh, a case of hemicentral retinal uh, vein occlusion, the whole inferior half of the retina uh, having capillary non-perfusion. So this is another example of a hyperfluorescence because of filling defect. So how do you interpret an angiogram? So first you have to know whether it's a normal angiogram or an abnormal angiogram. And the next point is to know whether the abnormality is black, white, or mixed. Then you look into the time characteristics uh, of an angiogram, so the arm retina time and the arteriovenous transit time, and the abnormality in which phase of the angiogram it's seen. And the final point is to see what happens to the size and intensity of, uh, intensity of the abnormality, whether it remains constant or whether the hyperfluorescence increases or decreases. So coming to a certain clinical uh, examples, so first one that we come across in our practice is the diabetic macular edema. So you can get a focal type of uh, leakage when you do an angiogram. And depending on the angiogram, uh, depending on the type of uh, focal macular edema, you can either get, if it's in the fovea, you can get a petaloid pattern, or if it's extra foveal, you can get a honeycomb pattern. So here you can see the petaloid pattern, and if it is in the extra foveal area, the chronic edema can lead to a honeycomb pattern. Then you can, uh, it's important to look before you uh, start your treatment for diabetic macular edema, whether there's any point of uh, ischemia in the macula. So as seen over here, you can see the uh, foveal avascular zone that is increased in size and irregular foveal avascular zone, which is a sign of ischemic macula. The next one that we come across in diabetic retinopathy is the IRMA, which are, again, uh, you can liable to get confused with new vascularization, but the new vascularization leakage is much uh, heavier and uh, more intense as, as compared to the IRMA. And this we have already discussed, the high-risk PDR, uh, wherein you get these new vessels which are uh, leaking profusely, either at the disc or elsewhere, depending on whether it's an NVD or an NVE. Coming to the vascular disorders, it's mainly to uh, degrade the degree of ischemia, to detect the complications that are associated with these, uh, like macular edema, to confirm the diagnosis in certain situations if you are dealing with a tribu uh, tributary vein occlusion, to identify the areas that need laser and to assess the response to your treatment, and to distinguish collaterals at the disc from the new vascularization at the disc. So this is an example of a branch retinal vein occlusion. And you can see over here in the early phases of the angiogram uh, that there is a gross dropout of the uh, capillary network. And there is staining of the vessel wall also. This is again an old STBR view, which is uh, good to do an angiogram to pick up the cases of neovascularization. And if that's the case, then you'll have to start laser treatment. And this is another case of hemicentral vein occlusion where the entire upper half of the retina is devoid of capillary network. Again, in CRVO, you can do the angiograms uh, after the resolution of the uh, hemorrhages in about three months' time. You can uh, perform the uh, uh, angiogram to know the amount of capillary dropout. A CRAO, again, uh, it's not mandated, but it's uh, good to know whether it's a reperfused CRAO. And in certain situations, especially if there is a posterior ciliary artery occlusion, you can pick up this uh, sign, which is called an amelitrix triangle which are hyperfluorescent area, triangular area, apex towards the posterior pole. In ROP, again, you can see it's um, quite required to do an angiogram where you have a very uh, small island in the posterior pole that is having a vascularity, and when you do an angiogram, uh, 
it picks up well the entire area of the retina which is devoid of vascularization. In Coates disease, again, it's good. Uh, in clinically, you might get only uh, hard exudates, but when you do an angiogram, it shows you well the area of non-perfusion, the uh, t lungectatic uh, vessels in the bordering the area of new vascular uh, non-perfusion, and the budding of the capillary network at the junction. AION, again, it is required when it shows, you can, uh, you can show the areas of um, uh, sectoral hypofluorescence, which is classic for AION. FEVR is familial exudative vitreo retinopathy, which is again a peripheral uh, non-vascularized uh, non disorder, where the vascularization in the periphery of the retina doesn't happen. So when you do an angiogram, it picks up well the peripheral temporal area of non-vascularization. And you have to follow up these patients to know whether this ridge forms a new vascularization in due course. And if that happens, then the patient needs to undergo angio um, laser therapy. New vascularization, uh, uh, choroidal new vascularization, again, as I told you, the classic type where you get the classical clack, um, cartwheel pattern in the early phases and it leaks profusely. Or you can get an occult type, which can be either the uh, late leakage or a fibrovascular PED. The ink plot uh, type of CSR, I've already told you. The smokestack, again, uh, where the uh, fluorescent pattern rises from a point leak. Or you can get a teardrop CSR and atrophic patches giving rise to a transmitted hyperfluorescence in a heel case of CSR. This is a PED, which again shows um, a well-defined margin where the, uh, this is how you differentiate a pooling from a leakage, where the margins are still clear in a case of pooling. Asteroid hyalosis, uh, clinically you are not uh, going to make out much from the fundus examination, but when you do an angiogram, the uh, lesions can be picked up very well. And the reason being that the asteroid hyalosis precludes your view of the fundus because of the reflected light. Whereas when you do an angiogram, the barrier filter takes out these uh, reflected light and only the light that is uh, brought out from the retina is seen. And that's why when you do an angiogram in an asteroid hyalosis, the view is much better. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.